like going to the mall is Mm. huge for me. So for example, if I was standing in Bath and Body Works, that's a struggle for me to be in that store. So as much as someone coming up to me says, oh, which scent do you want? I don't have that ability anymore. There's times where I don't remember what I used to function. I would go into Bath and Body Works and grab this, 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 and this, and I'd be gone. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't have the ability. So I know I say it to my daughter sometimes. I say it to my husband sometimes. Do I like that? Because I don't remember. So when I say, do I like that? I don't remember. Um, It's, there's times where I was like, have I been here before? It's, I hate to say it and I hate to admit it, But mental illness can really do things to your mind. And it's hard to stand in front of something and you don't remember what you liked. You don't remember what you would typically just reach for without thinking about it. Right. Wow. And, you know, so I, when I ask those questions or if I ask you the same question seven times over, I don't remember asking it in the first place. So there's like, and I don't delete text messages. I never delete text messages because I know I don't remember. Right. This is like blowing my mind right now because I never even thought of that. That's why these, com- these conversations are so important because I can imagine myself if I was out with one of my girlfriends who has struggled with something like you've struggled and I have a few of them and, and we went to a restaurant and she said, oh my gosh, I've never been here before. And I'm like, yeah, you have. And she's like, I don't recall. What do you mean you don't remember? Right? Instead of just mm-hmm. saying, oh, you know what? Okay. Well, we have been here before, but that's okay. You know, like, because we're not thinking, we're not in your body, we're not in your mind. And so that's why I feel so desperate. Like, I want to educate people right now and myself. You know, I'm being educated at the same time about this whole, the trauma behind the tragedy, right? There's, mm-hmm. because it's so complex, there's so many layers to that. And, it's just crucial that we understand at least uh, or have an idea of what's going on. You know, I'm never going to be able to feel, feel what you're feeling. And I'm never going to really understand why the brain does what it does, right, in your situation. But I can certainly just have compassion. And, just and think, that's, yeah, you know, that is like, key. Mm-hmm. And the other thing I can tell you is if you would have dialed me back five years ago, my opinion would be different of, we'll just get up and get moving. We'll just, until it, it unravels and it, it starts, you don't know. Like I know I went to paint night in December with, with someone that I've, I've let in and I was getting, my anxiety was out of control and I started to cry and she got up. She could see I wasn't okay. She got up, she came over and she said, here, She says, let me fix this. She says, everything is fine. So it's, you're vulnerable. Like I'm trying not to cry in a public place, Mm -hmm. but it just gets to the point where I can't make a decision. The lady's instructing and trying to tell me what to do. And it's not making sense. It's not comprehending. And the best way for me to explain that, it's almost like I'm dating myself here. It's like you put a record onto a record player and then you play it backwards and words are coming off the record player and they're splattering. So I'm looking to the right as a word splatters. I'm looking to the left as a word splatters, Mm. a splat word splattered in front of me and it goes on and I don't understand. And sometimes it can be a really simple question, but when I say I don't understand, I don't. Right. Powerful. And there's times where, yeah, I, there's times I say to Craig, he'll say, what do you want for supper? And I say, I can't make that decision. So please don't ask me. Mm-hmm. And it's taken me a long time to get to that place, even though I know I'm safe with him to say, I can't do that. So please don't ask me. Right. Yeah, I get it. Wow. Um, okay. So. Something that I wanted to, you know, to ask you was, do you feel that with all of the stuff that's been happening, you know, just last week we lost two people who were, you know, very famous. Mm -hmm. It it kind of brought the whole idea of um, 
mental illness to the forefront and suicide was, you know, kind of like the catchword of the week, which is unfortunate. But I also believe that it's pulling out some of the things like these conversations that need to happen. So do you feel like social media has played a role? And this may be an answer that you don't know, and that's fine. I'm just kind of curious. Do you think that social media has played a role in the increase of mental illness? Because from what I understand, the the numbers are higher, or it could just be that more people are being diagnosed. But um, what are your thoughts? I I think social media is playing, uh, obviously social media is opening up some of the conversation. I think social media can sometimes do damage. Um, I've, I've read some of the comments when, when, and for me, when a traumatic event happens, I'll, I'll read one or two things and then I need to shut off because if I don't shut off, I'll end up in the bottom of the hole. Um, so I guess with Anthony's death, a lot of comments are, I had no idea he was struggling. And then some of the comments were blame his girlfriend. Well, May 3rd, I made a decision. You couldn't blame my husband. You couldn't blame my daughter. You couldn't blame the neighbor. I've made a decision. So when you get to that point, nothing anybody says or does is going to change your mind. Mm -hmm. So people immediately with Anthony's death, it was like, oh, I had no idea. With Kate's death, it was like we had an idea that um, she was mentally ill because she hadn't really she'd hidden it, but not really hidden it. So people kind of knew that Kate Spade had mental so illness. Right. Yeah, I read some comments of, well, how could you do that to your daughter? How could you leave your daughter? I know that angered me. I, I don't feel things often that angered me because it was a case of F you. Yeah. At that point in time, it had nothing to do with what she thought about her daughter. It had everything to do with the fact that the pain is absolutely unbearable and I can't take one more minute of it. Right. Yeah. So exactly. we need to we need to talk about it. We need to be open about it. And I guess we need to flush our judgments down the toilet. Because it doesn't matter what your life is like. It doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. You're not standing in your own way of being happy and wanting to experience all those things. This illness has grabbed a hold of you, and some days it's driving your bus. Right. You know, so sometimes would you say something to somebody who's got cancer of, well, you know, you're letting this cancer, you know, stand in the own, your way of happiness, and you're like, really? Really? So it, it is an illness. It is your brain. And I admit my brain isn't functioning the way it was five years ago, 10 years ago. And I don't like to admit it. I really don't like to admit it. Right. But I have to, and I guess I need those people that love me and care about me to understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and if, if I agree to something in the moment and then I come back and tell you I can't do it, it's because I honestly can't do it. Right. I've, I've physically thrown up about knowing that I need to go out for supper with a girlfriend because I agreed to it in that moment. In that moment, it sounded like a fabulous idea. Right. But as I'm throwing up and the sheer terror of needing to go out and do it, I can't do it. Right. And I think... Probably this is a good place to kind of remember that don't take it personally, right? Exactly. Because I can I can imagine. I'm just speaking from the other side, you know, that if you make plans with somebody, say two or three times, and two or three times they're cancelled. Excuse me, I think I might sneeze. Oh, I hope not. Um, that you could take that personally, right? You could actually be like, Man, every time that I make I make every time that I make a date with her for coffee, she cancels. What, what's the deal? I thought that I was being a good friend. I've been supportive all along. I, I want to get her to the house. You know, you could just hear the whole dialogue, right? Don't take it personally. Do you feel that there is some responsibility from on your part to make sure that you're, and I, you may have already done this with your people who you love that are close to you, but maybe there are people out there who haven't. Is there some responsibility for, for somebody to say, you know what? I just, please know 
don't take it personally, right? If this happens in the future, please know, don't take it personally. It, I'm going to be honest, it depends on who it is. Because for me personally, I need to feel safe knowing that I can say, uh, I have a girlfriend that went to paint night with me. If I say no, she gets it. But I feel safe with her. Right. Yeah. If I don't feel safe with you, chances of me saying I can't are slim to none. I'll more likely come back with, I don't feel good. I have a cold. Oh, okay. Or something's come up. Mm. Like the excuses you can come up with because you are in high defense and flight, fight or flight all the time. Mm-hmm. You can come up with some doozies. I bet. A full it, story. It's, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's just I have to feel safe. I have to know mm-hmm. that I am safe. And there are people that I'm close to and I don't always tell things to. And it's not because I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to upset anybody. Yeah. I just, I don't feel safe at the best of times. So I can be sitting in my living room watching TV alone with my dog and I don't feel safe. There's times where the only place I feel safe is sitting on the floor in my closet by myself. Mm. And there's been times where my husband gets in there and sits with me and he's learned over time, don't talk, just sit there. Right. But I have to feel, I have to feel safe. Got it. That's really important to know. Really important to know. Sounds like your, your, your new husband is just an incredible human being. And, you know, (laughs) is really, you know, just walking the road with you. And I'm sure it's been a learning curve for him. Is there anything that you can say about that particular relationship and how that, that can be challenging or anything that somebody might need to know like if say say you were recently dating like it, maybe one of the listeners is dating somebody who has lost somebody you know it's what are I'm gonna say it has happen? been challenging um right. at first for me I think it took and he and I have had conversations about this at first for me it took time for him to realize I, d- I don't want this publicly broadcast. I, I, I just want it between us. Right. Um, I didn't, I, my daughter knew I wasn't okay. I don't think she fully knew all the ins and outs because I still wanted to be mom and protect her. Right. Um, she's seen a lot and she's a very strong young lady. I'm very proud of her. But I guess even sh- yesterday sharing on Facebook, when you told me to put the post on my wall, I almost threw up. Mm. and then look at the um, support you got it was beautiful it was and then Craig said he didn't share it on his wall because he didn't know if I wanted him to so I've seen I've seen a complete shift in him Mm -hmm. where as much as he needs love and support he's now realizing what what do I need to do for Melanie and he'd be the first person to tell you, you know what? There's days he still steps in it. It it's yeah, of course. It's like a landmine. It's like, well, I did that yesterday, and now I'm doing it, and I've just kicked her off the ledge. And he didn't mean to, mm, right? But, and I've resembled it sometimes to, you know, you know. Now I'm laying on the floor shattered, and I got to pick up the pieces, right? Whereas other people can just, you know, dust it off and move on. And, you know, it it was a situation and now we're good. But, you know, four hours from now, three of those words you said are still repeating in my head as my brain is mixing those words with a bunch of other stuff. Right. Yeah. So question for you about, uh, you know, about some of the things that you're dealing with. Your CPTSD. I think I said that right. I had to say it slowly, though. And anxiety and depression and those kinds of things. Are these things that, you know, is there a light at the end of the tunnel for you with this? Like, I know that you've, well, I shouldn't say I know. I feel like um, you probably have days that are great, right? And then days that are just terrible. You know, the wave, I hear about people talk about the wave of grief and how it can be so crazy. 
Um, do you feel like this is something that in time will get easier or is this 